Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Um, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, just to start out here, um, could any of the uh, people that are listening in the in the uh, in the chat room, can you let us know how the sound is coming? There should be a little bit of a static behind the voice, but the voice should be coming through clearly. So if somebody in the chat room could could write this out, it would be very, very appreciative. Thank you. Today, uh, today we're going to talk about the, uh, the, the different polarities of good and evil, and uh, this is what the Kundalini in me wants us to discuss today with the Kundalini in you. And uh, before we get started with that, however, I would like to, to uh, let people know that on YouTube, you can go to chrism.kundalini, and all 275 videos will come up. And I would like to invite you to partake of those videos. Uh, if you wish to, to go to a website, go to Kundalini Awakening System, the number one, dot com, and there you'll find the website that Glenn Ola has designed and maintained. And I'd like to uh, uh, say a, a heartfelt thank you to Glenn Ola for doing that, for not only for this information, but for the people receiving this information. If you'd like to visit us on Facebook, we have Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point. Uh, and you, you can feel free to join that group. You can also join Kundalini Healing!, uh, we also have one called a Kundalini Ashram <clears throat> that a person can join. Uh, if you're interested in uh, uh, the Yahoo Networks, we have the Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one at, at uh, yahoogroups.com. And we also have a Kundalini Healing on the Yahoo Groups uh, Network. So you can also go there as well. Um, if you'd like to leave a donation... Uh, to help us continue this work, then go to. Uh, hang on a second here. Go to uh, uh, Ascension Dash Kundalini or Ascension A S C E N S I O N Dash or uh, yeah, Dash uh, Kundalini K U N D A L I N I. And uh, we can accept your donation through the PayPal button that's there. So uh, much appreciated for, for anyone who has given a donation or would be planning on doing so in the future. Thank you to all of you. Uh, so I haven't received any kind of information about the sound from our wonderful users on the chat room here that would be guests 1678, 1710, 1727, and 1740. Could one of you please let me know how the sound quality is so that, you know, we can take any corrections that we may we may encounter? It uh, <laughs> doesn't look like anybody's too anxious to, to, uh, to just write in to the guest area here, so I'll just presume that things are going well. <clears throat> We are having seminars. Uh, we have set, we have a seminar scheduled for New York on the, the weekend of the 21st of March, and we also have one a week later in in Ireland. And uh, this would be in the same place that we uh, we had the last seminar in Ireland, which is right next to Newgrange. So it's a very nice place. Uh, it's a very beautiful place to. Uh, uh, to have a uh, Kundalini Awakening seminar. And the sound is very good. Well, thank you. Jeez, <laughs> it's like pulling teeth here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guest, uh, uh, KAS1 guest person. I believe that would be Amelia. Uh, Amelia is not able to, to join us today due to technical glitches uh, with Skype. Uh, she typically uh, joins me here in the studio, and she's unable to join with me here in the studio, but I think she's she's with us in the chat room, 
So uh, much appreciation uh, to to uh, Amelia Centara and her husband John and her children and you know the the, the dog uh, Chance and the and the, the the kitty cat Shakti uh, and all her various relatives and friends. So much much appreciation uh, uh, to Amelia and and her entourage. So let's get going with the, the nature of good and evil uh, in regards to Kundalini. Well, one of the first things uh, is there is no evil. <laughs> I know, I know. That's, that's a rough run to swallow when you, when you look in the news or you, you see around you people doing bad things. So in that way, yes, there is evil. But in a larger context, the Kundalini basically sees bad things humans do to other humans as opportunities in learning how not to treat each other. So even though the bad person is, is doing a bad thing to another person, it's not to be seen as a, as a, as a reason for, for revenge or a reason for get-backs or anything like that. It's to be seen as a learning equation, not to get pulled into the, to the emotions of it all. Uh, oh, and I, I want to say uh, to Tim Ashworth, Tim Ashworth, uh, thank you for writing me about the sound quality. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so if we're able, and it's very difficult not to get wrapped up into the emotional body because the emotional body is going to be injured right along with the physical body. Okay, and the ego is going to rush into both of those injuries and, and, and give out a yell. So, yeah, I understand. I understand that, uh, you know, when we see this on a regular, you know, 24-hour, seven-day-a-week type of situation in our in our in our mundane lives, we see that and we interpret that as something evil, not as something that is teaching us not to be, uh... oh boy, what did I do here? Hang on a second. Oh boy. There we are. Yeah, not to get tied up into into these types of, of pressurized situations. So active injury. Active injury 101 is when, you know, we'll talk about five-year-olds, when a five-year-old hits another five-year-old. And we teach them, oh, that's not the right thing to do. You need to apologize. And how would you feel if somebody hit you that way? And, you know, and all of these things. Well, as I may have mentioned in previous programs, human... Emotional body development uh, stops at around the age of 12 or 13 in men and maybe a little bit later in women. Either way, it's not a very uh, strong, shall we say, evolution compared to, say, the, uh, the body, the physical body. <coughs> so with the physical body... You know, you have this really, really fast development, and yet with the emotional body, it's not so fast. And the emotional body is pretty much held in control by the ego body, especially at the age of five. Okay, But as we mature into adult human females and males, our emotional body typically, and I can't say absolutist anything, but typically <coughs> the emotional body is far behind, extremely far behind the, uh, the physical body or the mental body or the spiritual body, and certainly uh, behind the ego body. And so this gives rise to, uh, to the emotions of retribution, of revenge, of, of, uh, of vindictive activities. And uh, so this is this is something that you, you need to look at now as you're in your mundane lives. I mean, all of you are, at least on the, uh, on the chat group, you're calling in from different areas, different states of the United States, different countries of this earth. And only you really know, uh, honestly, how 
your emotional body has developed or maybe needs to have more development. It's very important. The Kundalini sees almost all negativity from the highest vantage point. Well, okay, what is this negative action teaching Chrism? Let's see how he responds. So we'll say a, a, a guest 1710 does something really mean to me or whatever, you know. You know, and it's like, whoa, what, is, what, is, what does he do? How does he respond? How does he show? How does, how does he uh, express and demonstrate the fact that he is not taking this into the emotional body the way that he once would have? You know, it would have been, a, 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 a you know, a, a well, if, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you right back just so that you don't, so that you know that it's not okay to hit me. And the Kundalini is looking for a different response, a forgiving response. But, you know, the, there is always the caveat. It's just because your Kundalini awakens and you're being forgiving and you're being, you know, non-judgmental in these types of scenarios doesn't make you a doormat. People don't get to wipe their ego-based feet on you just because you're being nice. Okay. And that's another that, you know, there's a different lesson involved with that, which I'll get to uh, later on in this conversation. Um, I would like to say hello to uh, Celestial Rubies and Faschi. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us in this conversation today. Uh, once again, since some of you, some, you came in a bit late, this is a conversation about the kundalini nature of good versus evil. Okay. And, you know, in these conversations, I want to stress that I am taking this from a kundalini perspective, not a, a, a you know, public school perspective or grandma and grandpa perspective or, you know, Montessori teaching perspective or any of these other perspectives. I'm taking it strictly from a kundalini awakened perspective and when you come to kundalini awakening your perspective is 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 a big deal it's almost like you could have the 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 perspective body of a person because perspective is really how you're going to be able to deal with the kundalini in a very positive and uh, and beneficial way for yourself you have the ability to change your perspective and Having the ability to change the perspective is a huge deal because that basically makes you able to change the channel when you want to. Okay, you can you can expand your perspective into one of forgiveness. You can expand your perspective into one of just not letting whatever happens bother you. You can expand your perspective into taking it as a teaching and how you don't want to to do whatever is being done to you for another person. And so there are many, many positive learning and educational angles that can be explored within the Kundalini Awakening perspective on, on the nature of good versus evil. You'll note that in the safeties, I'm pretty much promoting a, a, a positive expression based in love, based in joy, based in forgiveness, based in tolerance and patience and trust. Uh, I push these qualities. And the reason why, it's not because I don't understand the Tao and that that everything you know in existence has its positive polarity and its negative polarity and that the Kundalini people are basically walking on the edge of that coin. And we stretch out our arms as we walk the edge of that that coin, and and one arm will go out over the, the the negative polarity, and another arm will go out of the positive polarity. They are all one, but one also needs to remember that we are not just on this planet to recognize the Tao. Well, we've already done that. The yin yang, we we understand uh, at least from a broad platform that you know. You know, certain qualities are attached to the yin and certain qualities are attached to the yang and, and they're in a constant perpetual motion uh, through the, uh, shall we just call it, the two water droplets with eyes. And that uh, in, the, in, the, 
In the dark water droplet, well, it has the white eye. And in the white water droplet, well, it has the dark eye. Okay, so we have aspects of each in, in both polarities. Now, with the Kundalini, you're given the opportunity to, to experience extreme levels of, of hardship and, and extreme levels of love and joy. And uh, it's very important for a person in the Kundalini Awakening situation to, uh, to begin to make concrete decisions that are based away away from negative responses, away from injurious, self-hurtful uh, validations based upon somebody else's opinion about you. Okay? You don't need to buy into those stories. Okay? You don't need to be a, a, the target of physical, emotional, or mental abuse. Okay? And I, and I just want to, you know... I want to let you know that Amelia has been trying over and over and over to get on, and she's just not being able to make it. And I just want to honor her for, for the attempt and, and to let you know, Amelia, that you can listen on the computer if you like. You don't have to keep trying to sign in. Um, uh, I would uh, remind you of the difficulties you've had in the past signing in on the laptop with your iPad turned on. Okay, I don't have that issue here in the States, but I think you've had it there in Ireland before. So now getting back to the conversation, I, I really do uh, support the positive effects of, of selfless service, of forgiveness, of love, of trust, of confidence, of competence. You know, many of the, you know, all of the safeties I support completely, and there's a reason why. You may not have noticed, but there's an extreme amount of negativity that is permeated through the populations of this world. Now, I, I've gone to different countries on this world. Uh, I haven't been to Asia or Australia yet, uh, or Africa or India, but I have been to South America, the United States, and Europe. And, and in those three continents... Uh, there's quite a level of negativity that's being expressed. Uh, but there's also a strong level of positivity that is also being stressed and expressed by people uh, in those continents. I mean, I found helpful people all over the world where I've traveled. Uh, you know, they're, no, they're not perfect people, but they're very, very helpful people. But for a Kundalini person, because we are so extremely sensitive we have to take a change, a conscious change in how we approach and, and ingest uh, certain levels of emotional trauma. Whether it's, you know, somebody hit you or somebody said something badly about you or somebody told a lie or somebody did whatever. Uh, we have to remember that because of the, the level of evol evolution in our Emotional body, which I talked about earlier, is so far behind the rest of our bodies that we need to make a concerted effort to be forgiving, to not reach for revenge. And so, of course, uh, when, when the Kundalini was writing the safeties and educating me about the safeties, uh, the, one of the first safeties it came up with was forgiveness. Forgiveness is huge. Forgiveness not only heals the person that's been harmed, but it also gives the, the person that's done the harm an opportunity to heal themselves as well. Uh, all the positive, all the positivities that are espoused in the safeties have a negative uh, uh, counterpart in the in the uh, the difficulties of life. You know, you can just go right down the list. You know. Forgiving, well, that's unforgiving. Trusting, well, then untrusting, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. And so for us, as Kundalini people, we need to reach for the forgiveness first. That's not always easy to do, really. It's not always easy to do. I mean, sometimes if, you know, you're in an emergency situation, even just a micro-emergency situation, somebody cuts in front of you with their car and almost, 
you know, hits the front end of your car, almost causes an accident. Well, you know, a lot of people are just going to start cussing up a storm right then and there, and, and I won't blame you if you do. I will not blame you if you do, but the uh, the aftermath of that, is, as soon as you're finished cussing, I would like you to forgive that person, and then forgive yourself for having the uh, the cussing response. <laughs> and I won't get into those many layered uh, uh, options of cussing response, uh, just to let you know that that uh, some, and you know, as you start doing this, you're going to need to blow off steam, and sometimes that steam comes on pretty quick. Just don't forget the other part of the equation, and that other part of the equation is to forgive and to be forgiving of self and others. It's not just a one-time thing. Well, he did something to me, so, so you know, he's the one that should be forgiven, not me. And sometimes that's absolutely the case. That's absolutely the case. But you still just you forgive yourself for whatever you may have done, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and you forgive that other person too. This is a big deal. This really helps the kundalini flow. Because of the, the lack of, uh, of uh, evolution within the emotional body, uh, the kundalini will really, really, really push that growth. It will, it will motivate a person to become more forgiving, uh, more forgiving than they ever have been before in their life. And they'll actually have more reasons to forgive because, of the various karmas that are being balanced and the various uh, uh, sensitivities that are being scratched, you know, by by the general public upon the kundalini awakened person. So it's very very important that we give forgiveness as a component of love, as a component of of uh, conscious positivity being expressed within your kundalini awakening experience. It's really, you know, it makes a huge, big difference. Evil is all over the place here. Evil is all over the place, and yet so is goodness. It's just that evil tends to cause people more pain than goodness, and so the shrieking is louder, the screams are louder, the the squeak from the wheel, as as some people like to use as an analogy, uh, is louder. It's louder than than uh, than the people that are having goodness occur to them because they're not really complaining at all. It's because goodness is good. <laughs> There's nothing to complain about. Badness, however, or evil, you know, that is much less enjoyable. And so there's plenty to to uh, to to complain about with regards to uh, to you know the the difficult evils in our society now. There are certain extremes that that are going to be hard for people to swallow. And, and gosh, you know, I'm just hesitating saying anything about it. There are certain extreme actions, murder, rape, um, uh, molestations. These things, these things, the Kundalini will not ignore these things it will force you to deal with these issues too. Some of you have been molested. Uh, you know, and in that way, I'm going to tie molestation and rape uh, into the same scenario, even though I know molestation can, can, can be given through uh, emotional uh, attitudes as well. But I'm, going to, I'm just going to go with the, uh, the molestation and the rape. Um, this is not good. From a mundane perspective, this is absolutely not to be done. It is to be forbidden. It is to be, it's to be punishable by years and years and years of being locked away so that you consider the ramifications of your crime. Okay. Within the Kundalini, though, it's a little different. With Kundalini, Kundalini knows your karma. Kundalini knows what issues you have in your life that are to be made correct or to be made right. And you may have, have, you know, all of us have have done the very bad things too. You know, we don't get to be kundalini awakened without having to, 
to learn and to understand and to be educated upon the, the ramifications of extreme negativity or extreme positivity. Okay, Because you're having the kundalini in this life and you may not be able to remember your karma, which is typically the case, by the way, you know, I mean, and, and, and also be aware of people saying, oh, I can see in your karma past life that you were a mailman or something like that. Don't buy into any of that. Okay. You go with what your kundalini tells you. Uh, in order to, to be where you are right now, you've had to experience both sides of that, of that coin, of that spiritual evolutionary coin, which we've also used as the Tao. Okay. Sometimes if you, if, you, if you go too deep into darkness, if you go very, very deep into darkness, you'll see a light. And that light is the, is the white eye of, of the dark water drop that is being chased by the white water drop that we're calling the dam. Okay. Uh, and it's the same thing. If you go into the, into the greatest goodness, well, there'll be a darkness there. An opportunity to become dark. An opportunity to to express in a negative fashion, uh, you know, what, what your ego would tell you to express. So it's very important that you understand that uh, within the Tao of this world, the Tao of this life, this Tao of your expressive kundalini in this life, in this mundane life, uh, there are levels of the Tao that are a loop. So, no, I mean, it's, we'll just say that you're living in the, in the white teardrop that, you know, that, that represents the goodness. And you live there, and you live there, you go from the, the tip of the tail to the top of the head of that, and, and oh, then you go towards the eye, and you run right into darkness. And it's the same thing on the other side, okay? It's a loop. And it's, the only reason it's a loop is for you to educate yourself with. And it doesn't mean that you have to, to you know, crush, kill, or destroy if you're living in the, in the shadowy side. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that you're surrounded by opportunities to express in a love-based, positive-based format. <coughs> Kundalini does not see badness or goodness as the mundane mind sees it. Kundalini, uh, at least the Kundalini that is, is expressing through me and has done so for the past 24 years, something like that, it's a much higher perspective. You can see that people have to live certain karmic expressions in order to burn the karma that they're here to, to balance or burn. When I say burn the karma, I mean that means to balance it, to, to, to make it less expressive, uh, to to bring it into a level of balance that allows a evolution to occur, okay? not a blockage to evolution. Kundalini sees most of the darkness that is given to a person within a Kundalini awakening as a positive thing. Okay? In a way, for people inside of Kundalini, depending on their karma, of course, uh, much of the Kundalini awakening experience is going to be through levels of density that are disguised as levels of, uh, of uh, like, say, depressing experience or, or, or negativity, uh, all the way up through the, uh, the positive state. Now, yes, you will live most of the time within the positive state if you have reached an area of your karmic balancing that allows you to live uh, in that area. If you haven't reached it, well, there's still more uh, of the shadow self to become familiar with. And you notice I'm not saying kill the shadow self, kill the dark side of the force. You know, da, 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 da. I'm not saying that at all because in our, in our nature we are... We are very similar to electrical conduits. We need uh, positive and negative in order for a current to flow. Okay, let's look at the world that we are, that we're born in. You know, this world here, in order to do our kundalini work. Well, we're we're born into Earth. We're born into a human mammal on this world. 
okay? We're born into a world that is predatory. Okay, the the mammals eat the grass. The grass eats the minerals. The minerals, you know, they're the they're the they're the the backbone of the shakti. The rock, the minerals, the dirt. You know, these are all part of the sacred feminine, and so. Really, from the get-go, we are produced and nurtured by uh, sacred feminine kundalini, or we'll call shakti kundalini, in order to achieve an evolutionary status that takes us beyond uh, some of the more commonly expressed emotions uh, in this world. Okay? Okay. So we're born in a predatory environment. In our first seven years, we're taught, literally, how to be a predator. What kind of meat do you like? Uh, what kind of food do you like? What kind of, you know, what, how do you like to respond uh, to, to, an, to an attack? How do you choose to, to handle yourself as a, from zero to seven years old? How do you choose to handle yourself when, when uh, you're in the, in the, in the, in a fearful state or in a in a, a a severely needy state such as you know starving or hungry or too cold or too hot uh you know how how is this person able to handle themselves in these areas and then of course we need to sprinkle into those first 7 years karma we'll just call it karma dust <laughs> the kundalini the whole time from, from from gestation all the way to seven years is sprinkling karma karma dust all over the place, uh, you know, setting up uh, uh, educations for that person to learn from, setting up situations where they're forced to deal with uh, negative or positive situations in a way that is that is most uh, focused for their karmic development to be given. So. Getting back to the safeties, the reason why the safeties are so pronounced towards love and and goodness, it's not because we're avoiding the shadow. It's just that there's so much of the shadow here. There's so much of the shadow here that, that the goodness, the goodness wants to come forward in a very strong way. And the kundalini allows that. And it will allow you to have this goodness while you're inside of your process. The reason being is that, you know, it's very easy to go negative in this world, in this society. And this society being the Western technological society comprising lots of Asia, Europe, United States, some of South America, uh, not so much Africa or or, uh, um, Native Australian, but certainly, you know, within the, uh, the Western components of those nations. So, yeah, uh, we are allowed to experience negativity and we are guided to respond positively within it. This is a big deal because as as people come into the Kundalini and they're given all these different lessons, and, you know, some they pass well, some they don't pass at all, you know, and those get to be repeated, Uh Within within the difficulties of, of having a kundalini life on this world, uh, the first thing one has to understand is that kundalini isn't one. Kundalini isn't just singular, as the uh, uh, you know the people that, that like the uh, the ad the Advaitists and you know the other people that are oh everything is one. Um, Everything is not one here. This is the land of duality. This is the land of, of, of allowing us to explore what it is to become one. But we are not as yet one. With the Kundalini, we are able to become one and plural at the same time. So we become the two that are one, which is plural, and we are that oneness with divinity 
by virtue of the plurality. Kind of like your mom and dad. Well, your mom and dad got together and, and uh, made a baby. So the two became one within that child. Okay. If you'd like to call in, uh, the call-in number is area code 347-934-0026. United States area code 347-934-0026. If you have any questions about your Kundalini Awakening experience, well, feel free to call in. Uh, If you have a comment that you want to make about uh, your experiences with negativity or positivity, feel free to call in. Okay? Uh, So with the safeties, I am promoting forgiveness, love, selfless service, patience, tolerance, trust, all, you know, very, very positive uh, expressions. And the reason being is that right now, because of the kundalini, we are being given an opportunity to stretch forward into the positive natures. You can almost see negativity and positivity as levels of density. Okay? With, with negativity, you have very, very dense levels of, of uh, shall we say, uh, material to move through big, heavy boulders over our heads that we have to lift and move out of the way. One boulder saying, revenge. Oh, God, it's so hard to lift that one. I'm going to have to exercise a little more before I can lift that one. And you exercise through forgiveness, of course. And so as, as we're able to move those big blockages out of our way, we're able to move into greater levels of positivity. And everybody's different with this. Not everybody has the same kind or level of density blockages. But as we move out of density uh, into, into the, the less dense, we can also begin to, to breathe that air of positivity. We no longer have to to reach into the, into the rocks that we now stand upon, that we've had to move each rock individually out of the way so that we could evolve through it. We now stand uh, on, on, uh, on terra firma, so to speak, that, is, that are levels of positivity. Okay, But yet, because we come from density, we understand that there are certain levels of density that have taught us certain things. Now we can also understand that there are certain lessons of positivity that will contradict directly the teachings that we've had to memorize uh, as we came through the dense material. Okay, These teachings are of tolerance, or of forgiveness, or of love, or of service, or of honesty, or of truth, or of you know, patience and diligence and, and uh, you know, many of the qualities that the Kundalini enjoys in its, in its uh, uh, flow and transformation of you. Now, you've got to remember, I'm talking about Kundalini awakened people here. I'm not talking about the general population. It's a completely different scenario with the general population, Okay. Uh, well, not completely different. They're still in, 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 you know, they're buried in density, okay? And they, they too, can practice levels of, of, uh, of karmic balancing and that will, that will bring them into a less dense area. But I'm talking specifically for kundalini people now. The kundalini person, as they explore the different uh, vicissitudes of what it is to have kundalini at all in the body, as you explore these expressions, you allow yourself to learn through trial and error. Okay, so with the Kundalini, if you uh, if somebody hits you, even though they hit you unintentionally, and you turn around and you slap them right back, well, the Kundalini will give you a level of severe pain in your heart for not being forgiving, for not being tolerant. Yes, you know, I used kind of a fairly difficult. Uh, Example there, getting slapped. That's never an enjoyable thing. <coughs> but I think you get you get the message. Okay. 
Kundalini people have a different view of positivity and negativity, or density and non or, or less dense. Okay, uh, we have reached a certain level of our individual evolution that allows us to go forward into joining uh, the Trinity, joining uh, joining sacred male, sacred female as a as a third component. Uh, of the Trinity that makes up those three uh, expressions and do it within a very, very positive context. There's a reason why we have bliss and ecstasy when we have Kundalini awakening. And it's not just because it's fun, even though it is. It's quite fun. Uh, our, Our positive natures are basically levels of of density for divinity. So what we've done is, we, is we've gone from from uh, prima materia, which would be, say, the basic building blocks of life uh, in a body, on a planet, breathing air, you know, air-breathing creatures, bipedal mammals. We've come up and, and we have moved the heavy boulders out of the way, the boulders of revenge, of retribution, of of anger, of craziness, of and, and I mean craziness in a very negative way. Uh, uh, we we moved through the levels of competition and and uh, cohabitation and and uh, you know we moved all the way up into the light. Well, the light is the is the sacred male coming through uh, the top of the person's head. It's also the sacred feminine uh, doing what she does so well, which is breaking up through the soil like a tiny seedling, pushes the the big blocks of soil out of the way until she reaches the light. And then, of course, the sacred male kisses kisses that little plant with the light and and the, uh, the unification has begun. It's the same with us. It's the same with us, okay? We have reached that level of light. Well, that level of light to the divine uh, person is like levels of density and boulders of the prima materia that we just left. So once again, uh, they're going to help us, the, the, the divine nature that we'll call kundalini. Kundalini is going to help us move through levels of virtuousness and positivity, goodness, love, tolerance, patience, trust, and beauty, and joy, and bliss, and ecstasy. It's going to allow us to move through those levels of grace towards a a more permanent uh, uh, understanding of what it is to, to be both negative and positive at the same time. Kundalini will will support this, will support this whole ideology. Uh, and within, you know, I'm going to repeat this, within the, the understanding of, of a kundalini awakening person, which is, these are the only ones I'm talking about, kundalini awakening people, there is no such thing as too negative or too hurtful unless it kills you. Okay, if, if the karma is there and the kundalini wants you to, to balance it, well, then you will be given the opportunity not only to balance it, but to experience what it is that needs to be balanced. It's just not going to say, you know, it's not going to send you a, a letter in the mail that says, well, Kristen, you were a little too belligerent um, with that last person who was being mean to you, and so, you know, you have this to work on. It won't send you that paper. What it will send you is it will send you the uh, the instructions that it just that I just kind of mimicked. You know, that's kind of how it comes to me. It's like, oh, geez, I was I was too uh, emotionally uh, belligerent to this person, and I need to uh, to call them up and, and see if there's any ruffled feathers and make apologies or make balances. Uh, where where I where I am being shown that they need to be made. And now this is how the Kundalini comes to me. Now it may come to you. You may get that letter in the mail. I can't say that won't happen. 
Kundalini Kundalini uh, works in very, 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 very strange and beautiful and fantastic and miraculous ways. So you just might get the letter in the mail saying, hey, hey, uh, Amelia Centara, you know, you killed that bug for no reason. Why? Why did you kill the bug, Amelia? You see. And then, of course, and I'm just using Amelia. She didn't really kill a bug that I know of, although I, I have my... And my suspicion is that it may have occurred. And if she ever comes on here again, well, you'll you'll know. You know, oh, look who's here. Hello, Amelia. <laughs> Hi, Chris. <laughs> did Hello. you did you kill a bug? Did you kill a bug? I just came on and heard that, so I have no idea what you said before. <laughs> <laughs> Well, say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. Um, I had to um, dish, what's the word? I had to get rid of Skype and reinstall it on my iPad, and now it's working. Oh, congratulations. I'll have to remember that technique. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, uh, have, you, uh, have you had any experiences of, uh, of having to, to be pushed through the soil of negativity? Into have, the light. Have I had? <coughs> say that again, please, and pardon me. Have I had any experience of what? Of being pushed through the soil of negativity into the positivity of sunshine. Oh yes, I have indeed. Um, that would be like like I'm, like most of us, like most of us. Yes, yes I have indeed. Okay, my dear. I'm going to go ahead and put you on hold here. I don't want to lose this uh, this stream of consciousness. Okay. Ah, here she goes. Okay. Well, it's good to have her on board. It just wasn't feeling right. Okay. So, so as we come into the light of Kundalini, well, you have to understand that the Kundalini is changing us. Uh, just the same way that the the Shakti pushes the 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 baby plant through those heavy boulders of of, uh, of rocks and animal um, feces and bugs and worms and predators and, and all of these things into the light, so are we as human plants being pushed through levels of negativity into the kundalini light. And now that we have this light, now, just like the plant, well, the plant is going to grow leaves, and we're going to grow leaves, and the plant is going, to, is going to form a blossom. Well, just the same thing that happens to us at the top of our head. The top of our head is that beautiful energetic blossom, that kundalini blossom that has only our signature on it. That's the kundalini. That's the evolution. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop where we, you know, we, where, you know, our roots are growing into the into the uh, into the soil, and, and our arms and leaves are stretching out into the sun, and our, you know, our, you know, all of the plant uh, uh, <laughs> analogies that we can make. It's a very accurate analogy, though, within a kundalini context. We are basically kundalini plants that are being opened to the divine sun. The Divine Sun. And I don't mean S-O-N. Although I do sometimes mean the S-O-N as far as uh, the uh, sacred male. Uh, but I'm, I'm talking about the Divine Sun. The Divine S-U-N. Which exists in two places at the same time. The Divine Sun exists at the base of the Kundalini Awakened Spine. But also outside of the kundalini awakened spine. Okay? So it's like a tendril of divinity is present within the base of the spine of someone who's going to awaken their kundalini. But the rest of the sun is outside of that body. And so as we come into the kundalini light and we are changed into saints and we are walking this world with saintly love and saintly forgiveness and and the you know any of the many abilities that come with being a saint is healing, such as you know becoming a world teacher or 
or doing the many different things that a person can become with the kundalini at the same time at the same time we are being propelled through the density of positivity Does that make any sense to you? We're being propelled through the density of our positive natures to reach into the divine nature. So if you have the three natures, you have density, uh, you have, uh, so we'll say negativity, positivity, divinity. Okay. In order to get to divinity, we have to go through uh, negativity and positivity to, to, to allow the flow to occur, and then from positivity into divine expression. That's the next level. That's the next level for all of us here. You know, everyone from, from Julie to Fashti to Tim Athwer, Ashworth to, to all the different guests, 1965 to 1678 to Amelia to, to uh, Rosemary, who's listening on the phone, to Eileen, who's listening on the computer. We are all going through negativity to get to positivity, to get to divine consciousness. And so from a kundalini perspective, everything that, that has happened to you that's negative, that's hurtful, that's however you want to phrase it, uh, you know, in a negative attitude, uh, that was necessary. That had to happen. You know, I've talked with people that have been molested this life, they've been raped, they've been tortured, they've been hurt. Those things had to happen. And I know it's difficult. It is absolutely difficult. And it's supposed to be difficult. It's not supposed to be, you know, easy peasy. It is difficult because, you know, karma, karma is all about righting a wrong, basically correcting a, a, uh, a situation that you created at another experience, another time. Uh, whether it's a, another time in this life or whether it's another time in another life, doesn't matter. It's there to be corrected. So if you were raped, if you were tortured, if you were uh, uh, abused emotionally, mentally, physically, all of the above, and now you have kundalini, well, that's why it occurred. Because now you have kundalini. Now you have a very healthy spark of divinity guiding you through negativity, the last vestiges of negativity, and the new areas of positivity into areas of divine expression. You have to get through negative and positive to get to divine. And that really, that is the nature of, of good versus evil within a kundalini context. You can't be evil and feel like you're getting rid of evil. Okay. Part of that system is that you have to change yourself in order to to evolve. So some of you, many of you, are going to still have roots and connections that dissolve and disappear into the into the soil of, of the negativity that has birthed you. Many of you will have those connections as well as having some of the positive connections that the Kundalini brings, but also some of the divine connections that Kundalini brings as well. It's not an either-or situation. What happens typically, as I, as I am taught, is that as we're in the, in the dense uh, uh, prima materia, which means primal material, uh, as you're there in that, in that dense level, well, levels of positivity reach down, and they reach down to pull you upward. They pull you and they help you to divide, to, to figure out certain ways to, to get through all the, the, the negative expressions of, say, hatred, rage, greed, uh, adversity, all the different levels 
Your, your positive nature is helping you to come through. And then Kundalini is seeping itself in there too because it knows that this is your life to have Kundalini awakening and it knows this. It sees this in your, in your program. And so it's going to help you. Okay, and based upon your karma, we'll, we'll, dis, we'll determine the levels of help that you receive. Okay, based upon your karma... Will, will determine the levels of help that you receive from positivity and from the divine layers. And so as you mature your way through that, you make the right choices, you follow the positive choices, you become that, that loving, helpful, happy, service-oriented person, then the Kundalini steps up the amount of teaching that's coming directly from the divine. And this, of course, will come in the form of Kriyas. This will, of course, come in the form of entity. This will, of course, come in the form of, of um, miraculous uh, uh, happenings occurring to the person or around the person or to, to people that the person loves. Okay. When the divine begins to insert its will, well, that's when the miracles really start to occur. And so as you've gone through the negativity and you've reached up into the positivity well, so is divinity reaching through both layers to help guide you uh, into your evolution, but without denying you the lessons that you must learn as you come out of, the, uh, of negativity. Okay? Now, if you have any questions about this, and, and, I, and I hope some of this is sticking with some of you, uh, you can call in, and uh, the number is the United States area code 347-934-0026. And it looks like I have about an hour left. It's hard to tell. Um, the iPad says one thing, and the laptop says another thing. And yeah. <laughs> They're only a minute off now, so that's cool. So, yeah, so you have, a, you have an hour to call in, unless I decide to end this earlier. Uh, Oh, hello, Fasci. I just saw that. Uh, the thing is, is, is uh, when the Kundalini's finished, she's finished. You know, the the teaching ends right then and there. And, and sometimes, as you, as you may have, for, for those of you who have listened to more than one, you may notice that uh, you know I'll just I've just given to end the show. Okay, that's how long that show was needing to be. Uh, I'll keep this one open a little bit later because there are a lot of there are a lot of questions that a person could ask uh, about this, uh, such as uh, uh, how do I know that the Kundalini is helping me uh, when I am inside of a terrible situation? Well, the one thing that you can really take take home with you is. If you even have the word kundalini in you, in your in your vocal experience, you know, in the words that you use, if you have the word kundalini there, it is already reaching in and helping you. And so inside of these 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 difficult times, just say the word kundalini. Just say it to yourself. Let that be a one word mantra to you. Kundalini. Kundalini, Kundalini. Let yourself say this to yourself as you go through these difficult experiences. And the Kundalini will not take that experience away from you, but it will help you to, to migrate to the next karma balancing experience. It will help you migrate to that next experience. And so that is a big deal. That is a big deal. If so, for instance, we you know we get back to the molestation. If a person's been molest, molested uh, in their life, and you know they have a real problem with it, I mean, you know, as as a person would, uh, but you know they're getting into to rage and they're getting into very very bright expressions of anger. Uh, the Kundalini will seep into that anger, begin to to pull away the the blockages. Uh, to to the person coming into balance with that, okay, and that yeah that will typically come up as a blockage for the person. So this is 
the Kundalini's way. It is not, you know, it's not assigning a a moral judgment to to goodness and badness, except as our as our society uh, gives us to do. So murder is bad, molestation is bad. Uh, well, that that occurred, and that occurred more than once or you wouldn't be given the opportunity to experience it and move through it. So it happened with you first, or you wouldn't be having that experience as a child. Children, children are, are, are it, 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 it's, a, it's a rough place to be a child in a, inside of a Kundalini Awakened event, uh, because they're so defenseless when it comes to these types of situations. And yet they are not defenseless because the Kundalini is sitting there with them the whole time going, okay, okay, little Chrisom, now it's time for you to burn off this new level of karma. Here we go. You know, and, and little Chrisom is put into a situation where, you know, he needs to be forgiving or or he needs to, to defend himself or he needs to defend another person or he needs to, whatever it is, clean his room. You know, I mean, any of the any of the different things that that we do as children that allow us to to come through uh, socially intact, i.e., you know, little Chrisom didn't murder his mother because she told him to clean the room, <laughs> which wouldn't have happened because my mom could beat me up at that time. <laughs> um, that is the protocol. Just like a plant, just like a seed that is dropped in the dark, dark, dark soil. And in here, if it's dropped in the soil right now, it's it's the dark, frosted soil. We don't have permafrost here, but but we have uh, we have some twenty or twenty four hour frosting going on. Uh, and then that seed has to first of all crack open. So the exact environmental conditions have to be met for that seed to germinate. Well, the germination occurs. The, 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 the baby plant is born. And now it's got to send out its roots and its little spider web of veins into the soil and to pull those nutrients from the soil. But it has to move all those rocks or go around those rocks or find a way to get to the sunlight. Now, this is where most of the population on the world is right now. Okay. And that is within a kundalini construct. You know, for, for those kundalini awakening people, most of the people are still in the soil uh, struggling to get their way into the sun or into a greater level of sun. Well, as they come closer to the surface of the soil, the light's going to become more and more and more and more intense. And as that light becomes more and more and more intense, so do, does the positivity become more and more and more intense. And there are levels of positivity that can just burn you to a crisp. You know, if, if, if you're not evolutionary, uh, if you're not able from an evolved standpoint to, to stand in that kind of light, well, it can just burn you to a crisp, just like standing on the surface of the sun. Okay. Uh, and that is... That is a correct analogy. With, uh, with that, your level of grace that has followed you through the soil of this earth, this negativity, uh, helping you push away this blockage and that blockage and, and allowing you to, to, uh, to prosper and promote uh, the kundalini awakening that's happening within you. Well, once you come up to that light... You have had levels of light beginning to to form a a uh, a bond with you the whole time. Okay, you've had that level of light, and so as the level of light increases and you come closer and closer and closer to the surface, well, your kundalini is going your your kundalini activity is going to increase and increase and increase to the point where you can stand in that light. But as you stand in that light, it accelerates into another level of, of transformative purification. Okay. And this is where 
the divine light begins to transform you, change you. You begin to feel wings growing on the, the shoulder blades and you know, all of these things. These are real. These are not I'm not I'm not talking fiction here. The origin of humans with wings has a lot more to do with fact than fantasy. And one of those facts is Kundalini. One needs to have that first. Okay. So without going too much further into that, uh, and I will in another in another uh, program, the Kundalini will give you very special tools, very special gifts that will allow you to have that great, that greater awareness and experience of divine light that would have burned you before. But now that you've been walking this path for a while, will you get a little bit of an umbrella? some sort of an umbrella. It's, it's an umbrella that's formed by your own radiance uh, at the, uh, at the uh, temples on the human head. Uh, a level of radiance like a corona comes out of the temples on both sides and also comes out the, the, uh, the sixth chakra and encircles the head with a spiky band of light. And the reason why I say spiky is because it's it's very much like if you look at the uh, Statue of Liberty in the United States, she has these, I believe they call her Columbia. Columbia has this light coming through these spikes on her head, and it's basically showing a, a, a rendition of a person that has a halo, a radiance around their head at the temples. And this is what the Kundalini person will have. And that will grow stronger and stronger. You actually feel it. You feel you can actually feel the spikiness of it too. Um, but this is what forms the umbrella. And the umbrella isn't there to keep the light out. It's there to to bring more light in, but in a way that doesn't damage the individual. This is why uh, I try to tell people to 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 you know go easy on the marijuana. Go easy, you know. Take out the alcohol, uh, take out the methamphetamine, take out all of these drugs because they they injure the seventh chakra and they can keep it from doing the the excellent job that it's here to do for you. So yeah, yeah, you are being conditioned. You are on a triple evolutionary path from density to positivity to divinity. Think about that. And if you'd like to call in, uh, the number to call in is United States Area Code 347-934-0026. And I'm going to bring this over to Rosemary. Say hello to Rosemary. Oh, right. I was treating it like an iPad. I need to put... Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Punching the button. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. How are you? Good afternoon. I'm good. I'm uh, examining my life here. As everyone should be. But you have done it, my dear. You you have you've been a nun for how many years? Twenty eight years. Twenty five. Twenty five years. You were a nun, and you went into the into the uh, the I almost called it a nunnery. That's my my bad. The convent. At an early mm-hmm. age, right out of high school, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So you've been following this light for a while, and this light has been following you for a while. I mean, isn't it interesting? What what made you leave the convent and come into Kundalini? What happened to you there, Rosemary? Well, those those things were not connected time-wise like I would see them, but I believe all of that, when you say a Kundalini signature... I, I really do believe that, and, and I like believing it and knowing that it's true for all of us in some way. Um, I, I was 25 years there, and I, I just realized it wasn't giving me anything. And I was, my spiritual life was being nurtured from outside the home in which I lived, and, and I said, it's backwards. And it was not clear, like 
uh, I, and it was the hardest thing I had done to that time in my life because I was I I, I went in right at, after high school and that you know things like at that age 42 43 I bought my first car um, it, it, it's amazing what I mean when I look back at it and it was exciting in some ways, but it also was, um, I mean, I, it was hard. And I, I was saying I didn't know who I was. I remember when I realized it wasn't something I was obliged to do and that my spiritual life could grow uh, outside of the walls of the convent. And I think that's probably what I remember exactly where I was driving when I said, oh, you know, I don't have to do this. Well, what, what took you? What took you to the Kundalini? Well, that was just two years ago, and I don't know that. I mean, consciously, it, I read it in the Edge magazine, and the, it was an article on service. The theme was service, and it was an interview with you about service. And I said, "Oh, that's really lovely." And I, there was uh, after that article, Eileen's information. And I, I did that and called her. And it was just like, uh, I mean, I didn't know what yes. Kundalini was for sure. I had heard the, na- the word one other time. And so I just so here listened. You are. I was guided, yes. And, uh, and she came, everybody, she came to the, uh, to the seminar in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. That Eileen Laurel had set up, mm-hmm. and out of out of the nine people that showed up, uh, she was one of two that had immediate response. One of two, but she also had had to do a practice. She had to show her Kundalini that she was willing to do a practice, and it's from that practice that some of her major uh, experiences came. Is that right? I, I yes, I do believe that, and through your guidance and your willingness and your patience, and um, you know, I would go back to saying when you were talking about the suffering, and I I thought about it for myself of what what was there because you would need that, you know, and the hardest thing was after a couple years after I left, it was a very lovely little story. I met this dear man sitting in the church pew one Sunday morning and we married a a couple years after that and he was older than I and we had 12 years of marriage and he died suddenly and that was the hardest thing I had done I think that was even harder than when I left the community but to go through that grieving process and uh, it it is a purification it's very difficult and it's it it is everywhere in you. Well, I, I just want to I want to say thank you, thank you, uh, you know, Rosemary for for telling us about that, and uh, I want to say that uh, I, I the the doors of the ashram here are opening to you and your visit uh, later on uh, in the first of the year. So just so you know that we're ready for you, and and uh, we're gonna. Get things going on a on a on a on a higher level for yourself. Well, that that too is interesting because I'm working at trying to get things to be okay here, so that when I go and and it's amazing to even think of doing that. We're coming well, for more is. than a. Mm-hmm. It is, and but I just want you to know that you're an amazing woman. And uh, everything that's being done with you is, is, you know, has a purpose, has a reason, has an agenda. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for listening to this and all the other interviews that you've come on with. Thank you very much, yes. Rosemary. Thank you. I'm going to put you back on hold here. And I'll bring Mr. Foschi out. Hello, Mr. Foschi. Hello. Well, how is it that you knew that I was me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Amelia helped me with that. <laughs> I, I I just wanted to to say that um, there is, uh, and I think I've used this term before, gesture of friendship 
that we open up to to the the Kundalini, the Shakti Kundalini, and when we do, uh, we open the door through uh, through through our acceptance to receive the guidance and the protection. Um, to be specific, I, um, as you know, I've been having some some issues physically, but um, the. Uh, Kundalini led me to one of the uh, one of the files that are on KAS one. Uh, it is the science of breath. I don't know who posted it, but um, I started to go through it, and I I started to do a particular exercise to uh, eradic- eradicate pain in the body, and certainly it it did work. Um, I I don't know how it worked, but it did, in fact, work. And I wanted to thank you or whoever posted that uh, for placing it there for me. Um, I didn't really know how to deal with the pain, and a lot of times it makes you a bit irrational. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. It makes you seek help in a, a lot of different ways that aren't necessary. Uh, right. And right. I I surrendered to that, and I was able to um, speed along the uh, the reparation or or the healing of this condition in my body. And I just wanted to thank you, and I wanted to say that uh, it's important that we realize that once we have established this openness or this gesture of friendship with the Kundalini, it will indeed speak with us. And it is always in such a quiet voice that we often feel that we are imagining that we're hearing this. But yet, if we are able to take the leap of faith and pardon me, it's okay, and do what we what we are advised to do. Are you having Are you having bliss? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> when we are able to do what we it's are hard advised to, it's hard to, to. Talk, it's hard to talk when you have bliss, huh? <laughs> I'm just so grateful to you, Grissom. No, no. And what you do, um, and what you allow to come through, um, that I just wanted to come on and say thank you. Um, uh, it is all true, whether our rational minds want to accept it or not. It is there. It is truly there. And um, that's pretty much all I have to say. It's it's getting better day by day. Uh, I'm not in a hurry. And because I guess I'm not in a hurry, it is moving quite rapidly and I I am so grateful. Well I am so. I am grateful for your presence here too and uh and, and for your wife, you know, she she is also a big part of this uh equation. And yes. uh Yeah, yeah, I just I <laughs> You saw her picture, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well thank you. Thank you for, for calling you. in and for for, for for giving us the, the you know the grace that's coming through you it's much appreciated Pastor. thank you thank you Chris okay bye okay so there we have it uh, you know from from Fashi and from Rosemary uh, I haven't heard from Amelia yet but you know I'm sure she's storing one up for us here we'll go over here right now what's going on with Her Holiness there in the uh, 
Kingdom of Kiri. Hello. Hi, Curzon. It's very good to hear Fashi speaking and, and Rosemary. And um, I just want to say thanks for that. Um, I'm excited for Rosemary. It's wonderful that she's going to the ashram. So blessings to her on that journey. Do you know what I want to say, Chris? I mean, I I was listening. I was listening to it, and again, you know, just thinking about my own life and the different, the positives and the negatives. And one of the things I'd like to say is how much the safeties have made a difference in my life. And um, you know, the practice, the practicing them, that has really helped me. You know, to move through the density, to move through the negativity, and. Um, because I respond by, by, you know, being committed to the safety, I respond in a different way than I might have responded. And so they have been extremely beneficial because they are positivity of itself, you know. They've just been so helpful. So I want to thank you for those and thank the Kundalini Shakti for those through you. And they have made a difference in my life. That's all I have to well. say. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Okay. Well, um, well, I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today. Um, basically, everything came out the way it wanted to have it come out, the Kundalini. And I just want you to know that as you listen to this, I would suggest, even those of you that are online right now that are listening in the chat room, I will suggest that you listen to these talks again because it is the Kundalini is in the voice. Listen to the voice. Hear the voice. Even if I would almost wish you didn't understand English. I wish I could like say it in like uh, Swahili or something. So if you could just take advantage. Of, of the energy that is coming to you in the voice. The Kundalini rides the voice, and it is riding my voice as, as, we, as we do this broadcast, which is why I feel these broadcasts can be so very, very helpful to a person, to a person inside of this experience, or to a person who is being gravitated towards this experience. And it's for those people that are just starting to feel the gravitational pull, and they don't know what's going on. They just feel a pull to do certain things in certain ways, uh, and, and they're just going with it. Well, this information is for for you as well. And, uh, and, and typically, you'll visit this in the archives, and I want to say hello and welcome to everybody who's hearing this in the archives. Um, I'm going to put Amelia back on for her announcement. Go ahead, Amelia, with your announcements that you usually do. Okay. Well, I'll begin with, um, actually, I'll begin with the seminars. We're going to be having um, two seminars happening at the beginning of the year in March 2014. The first one is going to be in New York, in the New York area, and that's happening on the 22nd and the 23rd of March. So if you're living in that area or on the East Coast and you're interested in coming to that seminar, please contact me and I can give you more information. That would be on kundaliniMatters at gmail.com. And then the following weekend, there's going to be another Kundalini Awakening Seminar in Ireland, and this is going to be held in Newgrange, County Me, and on the 29th and 30th of March. So again... If you have an interest in attending that, please contact me, and I can help you with um, how to get there. Um, it's very easy to get there now from Europe. It's a very short journey, and people that arrived to the last seminar um, were delighted that they came because it's only an hour, maybe two hours of the boat to get to the venue. So again, write to me on kundaliniMatters at gmail.com, and we can talk. You can talk there and I can give you more information. There's also um, a page on, oh, I don't actually have, I, w I also have a page on Facebook about it, but I don't have the, uh, the web address for that. The other thing that I'd like to announce again is if you want to make a donation to support Kundalini Awakening Systems and the work that Prism does, 
you can go to this address and on the top right hand side there's a donate button where you can make a donation and all donations are very much gratefully received. The, the address for that is wwwascension kundalini.blogspot.com. That's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. So thank you very much. Ah. That's it, Chris. Well, thank you very much, Amelia. Thank you for correcting it. Uh, it's a, it's a Ascension Kundalini, right? It's actually Ascension. Ascension Kundalini, yes. Ascension, Ascension, Ascension dash Kundalini. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want I want to thank John because I know he's up there listening on the other computer, right? Right. <laughs> so thank you, John. Thank you, John, and and thank you uh, everybody there in Ireland. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and and unless other people have some questions, uh, they can call in at area code three four seven. Nine three four zero zero two six. That's the United States area code. Uh, but if there are no more questions, I would like to say thank you, everyone, for coming and listening and and uh, you know spread it around, spread it around. If you know people that are having Kundalini or you know they may be in a hard place, get them over to these conversations. They're free. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is you're a better person for listening to it. Uh, really, really take advantage of, of, of what uh, John and Amelia are allowing to come onto the, into the world information. Uh, it's very important, very important stuff, and it can be very helpful for that one person. You know, if it keeps that one person out of the psych ward or from committing suicide, then, 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 then the job is well done. Anyway, I would like to say thank you to Celestial Rubies, to Fasci, to Rosemary, to Guest 1678-1740-1791-1825-1965-2025-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2125-2